Hey guys, so with all the recent world events surrounding the COVID-19 or coronavirus, there's been an incredible amount of support online from the maker community. They've been supplying the medical field with things like 3D printed ventilators as well as these 3D printed face shields. Now this one here is derived from a very popular design that I believe originated with Joseph Prussia. And I downloaded and printed that original one. I tried it on and I noticed that there were some areas that I thought I could improve. Uh, namely, the biggest one being the requirement for an elastic band around the back. That elastic band can be hard to source and a lot of people don't commonly have something like that just sitting around at home. And with all the stores closed, it's also very difficult to get your hands on other stuff. And so what I wanted to do was I wanted to work in a design in the back here that could allow you to still provide tension around your head while you wear this mask and it's all printed in one piece. So I'm gonna show you the guys that in this video. As well, I wanna just offer you guys a little bit of uh, advice in terms of ideas uh, for things like the foam piece on the front, as well as alternatives to that elastic band in the back that you can also use with my design here. Now as a forward to the rest of this video, you'll notice that I'm handling this thing without gloves. I am aware that I can have potentially contaminated this particular mask. And the good thing is, is that I understand that and this mask is not meant for distribution. This one here is for prototyping and demonstration purposes only. So you guys don't need to remind me of that in the comment section. I will not be distributing this mask. If you guys do plan on distributing masks and making your own, please be mindful of the rules around sanitation and not contaminating the people that you plan on giving these things to. And so there's some procedures I'm sure that you can find online in terms of producing and handling these things. Please do not infect other people by handing these things to them after you've touched them with your bare hands or you breathe all over them. So we'll start off by taking a quick look at the CAD model just to give you a general idea of what this thing looks like. And so I've modeled this in SolidWorks and as we rotate towards the back, you can see the additional blue straps that I've modeled in. And these things here are modeled in the position and orientation that you would print this entire thing. Looking at a top view, this is what it would look like as you print it from the top on a 3D printed bed. And again, you can see the sort of tighter tolerances between those pieces. And this is a single piece print in place uh, model. So you don't have to do any sort of additional post assembly. So now looking at a side view, you can see here that I removed those headband straps and there's a little arrow shaped detent feature in there. And as I bring the straps back and I make them transparent, you'll be able to see a outline of a sort of a gear shaped looking mechanism. And that little arrow detents into those features there. And so as you move the straps up and down, whether it's above or behind your head, there's a bunch of discrete positions that they fall into and it keeps them secured in place. And then that little arrow shaped piece has some material above and below it to keep the, the thin feature there from snapping off as you continue to cycle through each position. Now, as I bring in these other small features, I've employed some small 3D printing tricks here. And what I've done is I've created little bridges on the overhang parts that are only one layer thick. And so when I bring them back into the model, because now I've connected all of the pieces, it's essentially one giant piece instead of uh, three individual pieces. And so you see the colors change there in SolidWorks, but essentially those little single layer bridges allow you to print those complete overhangs uh, without any sort of support. So you won't need any support inside of that model there and that'll make a nice clean print. And then afterwards you can just break those single layers free very easily by hand. Post printing, there is very little cleanup to be done. You can actually pick off most of the support, if not all of it, by hand, as you see I'm doing here. Now, depending on your printer tolerances, uh, my printer isn't the greatest, and on the bottom layer, it has a tendency to sort of really squish everything together and over extrude just a little bit. And so it mended those bottom layers of the separate parts together. So my headband is actually still a little bit attached to the main bracket, if you want to call it that. I'm gonna take a little razor blade here and I'm just gonna separate them as it's only the bottom layer that's really an issue. Uh, this is pretty easily done. So once I've run my blade through, you can pretty much just pull up on those headband pieces and start working them back and forth. You're gonna to have to just rotate them once or twice 
in order to break those little bridge pieces that I showed you in the CAD model earlier. And once those things break free, you'll notice that it's much easier to rotate those headband pieces. And you'll also notice, that, like I said, there's a detent feature in there holding them in place into each position. With the bands free, you can now insert and secure the headband clasp. And if you notice here, there's actually only one clasp in this earlier prototype, but in the final CAD model, which I've released, there's two clasps for a more secure connection. The foam forehead piece is definitely a requirement as the bare 3D printed plastic feels like daggers on your forehead. And so I'm just cutting up some acoustic panel here that I had from another project. And it turns out that the hexagonal shapes inside on the original Prussia design can be used to weave that foam through and you don't need to use anything like elastic bands or even an adhesive backing to attach that uh, because most of us don't have adhesive backing laying around and most of us probably don't even have this sound deadening material laying around either and if you guys don't have something like that I was thinking that you could probably get creative and roll up some paper towels and weave that through or even cut up some old t-shirts or something of that nature and again weave it through like I'm showing you here and that'll secure it into place. Now foam or any porous material isn't ideal in a hospital environment as it can store bacteria, germs and all sorts of things uh, in those pores and so by using pieces like this in a resourceful manner uh, you can easily throw them out after and make it a one-time use feature where you're not having to clean uh, foam that has an adhesive backing. We're going to try this thing on and you can insert the clasp on the new design. Like I said, there's two clasps and you can essentially just fit it over your head at this point and you can make any adjustments that are necessary with the clasps. Now, when you turn to the side on the original design, when this thing would go straight over your head with a straight elastic band, there's a large opening at the bottom and the angle is a little weird. By having these detent features, you can actually turn the band down as I've done here and get a better angle on that mask and it's very secure. Optionally, you can take your bands and you can rotate them upwards into an above the head position as you can see that I'm doing here. If you're finding that the mask is falling forward over on top of your face too much and that'll prevent it from falling down. Now, you don't have that behind the head support anymore, so there's two slotted features that are included in this model. And you can go back to something more traditional like the elastic features or get creative and you can go to the dollar store and pick up some Velcro straps. The ones that I'm showing you here are just a very short version. I have some longer versions on order from Amazon. And the Velcro can just weave through and then you can obviously put that behind your head and adjust the tension with Velcro. If you get really desperate, you can also resort to using zip ties through those little slotted features. And here you can see that I've looped it through those slots at the back and you're just gonna need a second zip tie to lock it into place and then you can adjust the tension by on your head and then you can come in with some side cutters and obviously cut off the excess zip tie. As for the actual plastic shield, the original Prussia design calls for a half millimeter thick eight and a half inch by 11 inch, which is an A4 size sheet of regular printer paper, uh, PETG plastic. Now I had PETG plastic sheet here, but it's one and a half millimeters thick. And so I did get it to fit on there as a prototype just to prove that it did work. Um, I'll include the template for drilling and cutting down below in the description. But other than that, if you have the original half millimeter thick piece of PETG as it calls for, you can include the bottom piece here. It's 3D printed as well. And that just holds it into shape as it is a lot more floppy than this uh, one and a half millimeter thick version that I have here. So that's it for this video, guys. I hope this inspires you guys to do something positive and make some sort of positive contribution to somebody who needs it right now. Please stay healthy and stay safe.